2000s toy commercials were absolutely peak, like there was really nothing like them. We had the best toys, the best commercials, and just the greatest time to grow up in. Right before the rise of cell phones, but when technology was still good enough that you could play cool video games and access the internet, it was genuinely perfect at least from my very biased perspective. So today we're taking a look at a bunch of the classic commercials that made our childhoods, in no particular order. And after that, we're gonna take a look at the actual toys and see if they stack up. One of those 2000s toys to me is the eye dog. The eye dog was a little pet dog that was essentially one of those little pet care toys. But not only that, it played music and it connected to your iPod, hence the name, and it would dance to the music that you played. It was like a toy and a speaker at the same time. Not a very good speaker, but you know, still a speaker nonetheless. To me, this is like the most 2000s toy ever created. It's genuinely so like iconic in so many ways. Obviously, having it combined with the iPod, which is an incredibly iconic piece of technology of the time, really helps it in that regard, but still, the commercials for this toy were crazy. They made them seem like the coolest things in the world. They'd have people playing music and the dog dancing around to it, or they'd have them in like a, a white room, kind of like one of those old music videos or Apple commercials. It was wild. I love how all these kids here are like dressed. Their style is so perfect. It's just such a perfect time capsule to the mid 2000s. It's, it's beautiful. There were a ton of eye dogs. Eventually they stopped being speakers entirely. Like they were Burger King toys, plush toys. Some of them weren't even dogs. They were like, there was like a fish. Regardless, this was a super iconic toy from the 2000s that many people remember very, very fondly. Another toy that I very, very distinctly remember are Mighty Beans. In 2002, the company by the name of Moose released a toy by the name of Mighty Beans. Mighty Beans are these small little bean toys that felt almost like they were alive. They had a little marble on the inside, and the way that they were made basically made it so they would kind of balance and kind of crawl around whenever it was being moved. It's really hard to describe if you haven't actually played with a Mighty Beans toy, but I feel like the commercials probably do it some justice. Speaking of which, these commercials were so cool. They went really, really hard. Like all these old commercials, they were flashy and colorful and fast paced and featured a bunch of CGI Mighty Beans alive, making you really, really want to have one. I had a pretty decent collection as a kid, and one of those little track things as well, and I absolutely love these things. Obviously this is nothing new, but I feel like in the 2000s there was really this rise of like blind bag toys. Whether it was Mighty Beans or Squinkies or whatever else, it was so common to have these at like the checkout aisle of your local Target and stuff like that, or just like, you know what, might as well grab one little figure on my way out. And God, it worked. The amount of kids that would beg their moms for just one of these little toys as they were checking out was pretty high. Mighty Beans eventually started doing collaborations with different companies. There was a Star Wars Mighty Beans collaboration, which was my first Mighty Beans toy. It was like a Millennium Falcon Mighty Beansified, and initially I thought it was very strange, but I fell in love with it. Obviously they later fell off in popularity, like many of the things that we're talking about today, but many people remember them very, very fondly, and their commercials were awesome. When I think about Mighty Beans, something else that comes to mind is Go-Go's Crazy Bones. You got your bones ready, a brew of bones too. So play those crazy bones, that's what you gotta do. Get your shoes. Go-Go's Crazy Bones was a line of toys that initially started being made in the 90s. There were these little plastic figures that came in blind bags and were collectible. These original ones didn't have any paint on them and just really relied on the sculpt for the design of the toys. There were games that you could play with them, you could like flick them at each other and throw them and stuff like that, and it was really up to the kid who had them. They were basically brought back in the 2000s as Go-Go's Crazy Bones once again, but with a different art style, which, like, look at this picture. What what is this aesthetic called because it's so specific and it's such a thing that once was that you don't really see anymore I don't know the name of this aesthetic, but it's it's something if you do know Please let me know because I've been trying to figure it out for a while Something that really defines these classic commercials is having poorly rendered CGI models of the toys like moving around and talking and then being like turned into the actual toy You see that so much and honestly, I gotta be honest. It, it really worked at the time it really prioritized the sort of like street art graffiti aesthetic, which I think looks really cool. Each one also came with like a sticker of itself too, which added to the collectability of it, which is pretty genius, I gotta be honest. Now, this leads me to think about the classic gross out toys. This wasn't unique to the 2000s, obviously. We'd been getting cool, like, gross toys since the 80s with Garbage Pail Kids and stuff like that, and of course through the 90s as well. But there was really a renaissance in the 2000s of these gross toys. Something that was kind of similar to Go-Go's was the Trash Pack. 
The Trash Pack was basically a series of little toys created by Moose, the same company who made Mighty Beans. There were these little plastic squishy toys that were all themed around different trash items or things that you'd find in the trash. And they were all little living characters. It was so, so cool. I remember finding out about these toys because there was a promotional display that my local Toys R Us was having. I was lucky enough to have my local Toys R Us be the one and only Times Square location. You know, with the Ferris wheel and the dinosaur and all that. I didn't buy any at the time, but they really captured my interest. So, another time that I went there, I ended up asking my mom for a pack of them, and I got it. And I was hooked. Like many of these toys, they really focused on that collectible nature. Two of the trash packs in the normal box were exposed, while the rest were in these little trash bins. So it was really a mystery. Of course, there were common ones, rare ones, glow-in-the-dark ones. It was, it was really just perfect. And the commercials really did not skimp out at all. My favorite of which has to be the original Series 1 commercial. It is so, so cool. The set is awesome, the little CGI characters are great, and honestly, it makes you want trash pack figures. Or at least it still works for me. Another very iconic thing about these types of commercials was the rock music in the background and the overly enthusiastic narrator. Like, for example, if I were to advertise my uh, plush toy coming out soon in this sort of style, it would be something like this. Hey kids! Come check out the Raymundo 2112 Articulated Plushie! Coming out soon, you can move his arms, squeeze him, and play with him! He's the coolest alien on Earth! He's only $35 plus shipping and handling! Check out more at www.youtube.com slash Raymundo2112! Ask your parents before going online. That style of commercial just worked, clearly. I mean, there was something about it that really attracted a 2000s kid. I don't know if it would really work nowadays, but hey. Trash Pack went on for years and had many more commercials. Something I always loved about him is that the sets around the toys were always really, really cool and fit in with the theme of it. Trash Pack had little vehicles, play sets, all these different things. And they were honestly really cool. They ended up branching out into little car Trash Pack figures like wrestling ones and also these food fighter-esque action figure sort of things and then they changed to the grocery gang which was basically just like a food themed re-theme they don't make trash pack anymore unfortunately but i'll forever cherish my memories with the trash pack figures and i still love their commercials another toy that absolutely captivated me as a kid was mad balls mad balls mad balls gross for one gross for all we play with a mad ball. originally releasing back in the 1980s mad balls were a very popular toy of the time there were these foam balls that had different creepy faces on them there were all these different little characters and kids ate them up back in the 80s but only for so long as eventually they were discontinued and the company that made them went bankrupt however in 2007 mad balls were actually brought back from the dead they were all redesigned to be much more realistic and gruesome, which really fit with the edgier nature of the 2000s. I've never really heard anyone else kind of talk about it, but at least to me, it felt like a lot of 2000s stuff had a really sort of edgy and creepy nature to it. Like, that was just the running aesthetic at the time. This might sound a little outlandish, but my theory kind of is that after the events of September 11th, the entire vibe around the United States completely changed to a much more dark and somber sort of thing popular culture also changed, and especially music. This is also during the peak of, like, emo culture, which adds to it as well. Like, most commercials trying to be cool were often on the edgier, kind of creepier side back then, which you never see anymore. Like, we'll get to this later, but Nintendo, they had some pretty strange commercials back then. But anyways, back to Mad Balls. They had a much more creepy and grotesque design. The majority of the original characters returned, including some new ones. They also made a line called the Six Series, where instead of being foam balls, there were these kind of like rubbery shells with little squish balls on the inside that had different gross things inside of them. The commercial for this series of toys was awesome. It was very low budget seeming, which really adds to the charm of it. Displaying all the characters, and of course the new 6 series toys. My favorite scene in the whole thing is this part right here, where if you grew up then, you're gonna recognize this trope. All these like gross toy commercial toys always had the kids like scaring their sister or some sort of girl with them, and then their hair would flip up and they would scream. But in this one the effect wasn't done very well, so you can actually see on the top left corner whatever device is lifting up her hair for a second. Like, look at this. I love it. There's such a charm to it. And then she comes out and she's got the bash brain one and she's like, yeah, I'm cool too. Now, I should note something here. And I don't know if this was literally just me who experienced this because I have heard no one ever, ever speak about this. But there was this sort of rabbit hole that you could go down. 
And not in a bad way, of course. On YouTube, you could basically look up any of these, like, gross toys. And then from there, the recommended areas would keep showing you more and more of these gross toy commercials, which often would turn into, like, 80s toys, 90s toys. There was such a specific way to do it. For me, Mad Balls was always the sort of gateway. And then it would switch into another toy, like Dr. Dreadful or Stretch Screamer, and then keep going and going and going, and I'd see all these cool commercials that I wouldn't have seen otherwise. But I had so much fun going down this rabbit hole every time, and seeing all these old commercials almost in the same order, like every time. It was genuinely, like, really cool. Another classic toy which I just mentioned was Stretch Screamers. Electronic Stretch Screamers was a line of toys that was kind of bizarre. It was derivative of the classic Stretch Armstrong toy, which if you don't know is this like action figure guy who is made of a very stretchy material and he's got like corn syrup inside of him so you can stretch him really far and he'll always return to his original shape. Makes sense, it's cute. There are some villains that are kind of creepier, but they're just squishy stretch toys. However, Stretch Screamers took to take that theme and make it a little more like twisted, at least in retrospect. So Stretch Screamers, in, in their commercials, they, they'd feature kids attacking these little monsters. They don't fight back, they just scream. That's what they do. You stretch them, you punch them, you smack them, they scream in, in agony. That's the toy. You can also squeeze their brains out or pop an eyeball and they'll scream through that as well. That's what Stretch Screamers do. And dude, let me tell you, these toys were so, so fun. They may sound twisted, but they were amazing. There were a bunch of different Stretch Screamers. The original line was Frankenstein's monster, a mummy, ghost face, and a werewolf. However, they continued to make more and more with different variations, like aliens and more monsters, and like bugs with more popping body parts. There was really a lot of them. They were discontinued and then rebooted to have a more modern design, and then those were discontinued and then rebooted again to have a more modern design, but they were all basically the same thing in the end. This is such a toy that would, like, only exist in the 2000s. I, I miss this sort of toy. Just, like, it's crazy, it's insane, and it's so much fun. They truly are classic, and honestly, like, I love them. One more toy that was very similar to Stretch Screamers was the Electronic Morph Men. They would stretch and scream, but they had a special gimmick. If you took this little, like, syringe and put it into one of their leg holes and sucked it out, all the air would be removed and they'd be left with this bumpy, like, deformed look to them, which ended up making them, like, harder and more crunchy. These toys were also kind of insane, and my brother ended up actually getting one. These toy commercials really worked on me and my brother. Many years after the toys that they were actually selling were discontinued, you know, it was good for eBay sellers at least. Another classic was Creepy Crawlers. Man, these were crazy. Another older toy, these were rebooted in the 2000s, and of course had a new line of commercials. Creepy Crawlers was basically a toy where you could make your own bugs out of this like plasticky sort of material. The way that they were made throughout the years definitely changed quite a lot, where originally you'd have to kind of cook them in this plastic, which was not the safest thing. But with the newer one, it was a much safer way of doing it. You'd basically make these bugs and then you'd destroy them. You'd splat them or you'd crush them or, you know, scare a woman with them. That was really <laughs> the main function of Creepy Crawlers. But the commercials were awesome and they made them look like a ton of fun. I never had them growing up, but I always like wanted them. However, they were like weirdly expensive and I didn't like how limited they were because like once you destroyed your Creepy Crawler, you know, you just had a destroyed Creepy Crawler couldn't really remake it, as far as I know. This commercial is another example of the classic cool rock music and crazy narrator in the background, scaring a woman and the boys being all cool and playing with their gross toy. It's, it's great. This makes me think of Dr. Dreadful, which is another line from the 90s that was again rebooted in the 2000s. Bro, Dr. Dreadful commercials were so, so cool. They featured this mad scientist character and some kids making all these different treats out of these gross different things. The classic like slogan of the toy was Looks gross! Tastes great! I'm being completely honest. The Dr. Dreadful treats weren't usually the best actually tasting, but it was like fun to just make something and have it be your own little creation. I say this because I, I grew up with Dr. Dreadful and I was kind of obsessed with it. I had the zombie brain toy and the alien as well. And of course, I found this by this YouTube rabbit hole. I would not have known about Dr. Dreadful otherwise. No, I, I saw the commercials on YouTube, uploaded by different people who weren't the toy distributor, and then fell in love with the toy. The commercials are really, really cheesy, but they're totally awesome, and they absolutely hold up, honestly. In a similar vein as Dr. Dreadful, we had the Queasy Bake Oven, which, as the name implies, was just a gross version of an Easy Bake Oven. 
Like, this thing was literally just an easy-bake oven, but it was green and purple, and you'd make, like, gross food. The commercials were also pretty bizarre. They featured this weird, gross, uh, chef guy going over to a dinner table where two kids were seated, and then he would get rid of their fancy food and give them a queasy-bake oven, and have them make the gross food. And often, you know, the fancy woman who's there would faint into her bowl of spaghetti, and it'd be a whole thing. It had the same slogan of looks gross, tastes great. Queasy Bake Oven was absolutely crazy, and it's such a time capsule of the early 2000s kind of toy culture, at least for boys. Which that now leads me into cooking toys that weren't disgusting. Of course, we had classics like the Easy Bake Oven, which had great commercials that more so targeted girls. However, there were some more obscure ones that I'd found on YouTube that I want to talk about. Like, for example, the real chocolate fountain commercial. This was a, it was a genius commercial. Nothing made me want a chocolate fountain more than watching this type of thing. It has cool pop punk rock music in the background where the narrator explains that you can make all these delicious things with this real chocolate fountain. It looks so delicious, man. These kids are loving it, therefore me as a kid would also love it. I would just rewatch these commercials, honestly, if I'm being completely real. There's another one, a Japanese commercial by the name of Sugar Bunny's Chocolate Fountain. This was another Chocolate Fountain commercial featuring the Sugar Bunny's characters. It was all in Japanese, but again, like the other ones, it had that same appeal of it just looking so delicious. The thumbnail too was perfect, it was a marshmallow being dipped in the chocolate, which is, is delectable. I always loved the way that they said banana in this, uh, because it was also like the only word I could understand. Banana. All these, like, food-making commercials were so classic, and you'd think that actual companies would want to get in on it, like food companies, right? Well, they did, actually. Specifically, McDonald's did. There was a toy by the name of the McDonald's McFlurry Maker, which had a wild commercial. Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can make yourself a McDonald's McFlurry using cream and ice and salt and then just cranking it for a while. And it looked incredible. This is one of the other toys that I just really wanted and would watch over and over again because of how delicious it looked. And it was such a great way to make kids hooked on McDonald's. I wasn't really much a McDonald's kid, I, I, I had it sometimes. But I know that some people, like, watched the commercial and just fell in love with them, and yeah, really, really, uh, manipulative advertising, which also, for those who don't know, that's why they don't really use mascots anymore, except for the little Happy Meals, that, like, Ronald McDonald and the rest of McDonald Land characters aren't really legal for them to use anymore, on account of the fact that there are child advertising laws, especially when it comes to something that's so unhealthy, such as McDonald's. But regardless, that wasn't the only McDonald's maker toy, no. There was a line of other ones that was more of a 90s thing, and I'm not sure if they ever had a commercial, but there were a ton of videos on YouTube showing them off, and these were the McDonald's food maker toys from the early 90s. You weren't actually making burgers and chicken nuggets, but rather you were making little, like, pastry versions of them. So like, the burger would be made of little, little Nilla wafers as the buns, and you'd crush up chocolate and peanut butter and cereal to make the patty, and use fruit roll-ups as the cheese, and the tomatoes, and the pickles, and all that stuff. These things were just so cool and so satisfying. There weren't any commercials for them as far as I know, but people making YouTube videos like 15 years later really, um, it really sold the toy for a lot of kids. And honestly, uh, it sold it so much to the point where my brother asked for one for Christmas and got one. But we'll get to that later. Something I distinctly remember was the Slushy Magic Cup. Slushy Magic was this line of, like, cups that you'd shake and squeeze and essentially make a slushy out of them. Allegedly. They had these little, like, gel cubes that you'd freeze and then put inside the cup with whatever drink you wanted to turn into a slushy. You'd shake it up for a few minutes and then apparently you would get a slushy. This commercial was both on YouTube a lot, but also aired on the Hub Network which is a channel that I used to watch quite a lot as a kid because they played My Little Pony there and I was a little brony boy. I always won one of these things, my mom was always skeptical. And for good reason, because it turns out it didn't actually work too well. You could kind of make it sort of slushy, but the way that they showed it in the commercials was not accurate at all. I ended up trying it at my cousin's house and was very, very disappointed. Regardless, the commercials are still super nostalgic. They even had like an ice cream magic cup as well, which believe it or not, did not work as well as the commercial. Huh. Could you imagine that? Anyway, these were classics. They were more early 2010s than they were 2000s, but still. Now let's take a look at some other toys that I can't really categorize as well. Amazing Elastic Plastic. Okay, so does anyone remember Amazing Elastic Plastic? If not, here, check out this commercial. It was originally a toy that came out in the 90s, but was then discontinued because um, it was a very toxic material that they were using, so they had to discontinue it. And then brought it back, only this time, it was safe. And they'd have displays in different popular stores, such as FAO Schwartz, 
and the one and only Times Square Toys R Us, which, like stated earlier, it was my local Toys R Us, that's where I went all the time. So people would be displaying this toy, making these huge balloons that wouldn't pop, and you could actually move like balloons made out of this plastic that they blow out of a straw, and it just looked incredible. You know, and, and then you'd buy the actual magic plastic stuff, make your own balloons, and they were like the size of a baseball and would break super easily. Kind of felt like false advertising a bit, but I've realized that I may be wrong about that. The commercials were super fun and really displayed how cool they could be, but I've made a realization that perhaps I was just doing it wrong as a kid and most other kids were also doing it wrong. Uh, the store that I work at, because YouTube's not my only job, it's a struggling economy here. I work at a toy store and there they display amazing elastic plastic. And the people displaying it, honestly, like they're not using a different material, but they make these huge balloons that they bounce around and people can touch and like, they don't pop and they're like really, really tough and just kind of amazing looking. So perhaps I've just been doing it wrong. But again, we'll, we'll get to that later. Man, another classic was Pillow Pets. Pillow Pets was a series of toys which were basically like these plushies with Velcro on them. So you could have the Velcro go around and strap on so they looked like they were standing up. But then when you got rid of it, they would flatten out and they'd be a pillow. So they were a pillow and a pet. They were Pillow Pets. I remember these commercials super clearly. They would play on TV quite a lot. And what's funny too is that I remember they would often kind of target grandmas and parents because this is exactly the sort of thing that your grandma would buy you. Perfect for the overnight trips to grandma's house. This is more than just another stuffed animal. This is a pillow that your child or grandchild will use every night. But yeah, they were super cute. They were classic. I had the monkey growing up and I loved it. It kind of fell apart and got gross in its later years, but you know, it was fun. If you want to learn more about pillow pets and kind of their history, I'd recommend a video by the name of From Pillow Pets to Squishmallows, The Evolution of Throw Pillow Animals by Dream Jelly, who is honestly one of my favorite rising YouTubers. Like, her videos are so good, and her rise to fame has been, like, the quickest I've ever seen because she's nearly at uh, 100,000 subscribers. Um, and it only took about, uh, like, half a year to get there, which is... I don't know, it feels unheard of. It's, it's amazing, and I'd love to work with her someday. But anyway, regardless, Pillow Pets were classic. Another sort of pet toy that comes to mind was a little dinosaur of the name of Little Inu. Little Inu was one of those kind of animatronic pet toys. So you could walk around, you could feed him, he'd make noise, eyes would move. It was actually a pretty good little animatronic, all things considered. And he was so cute. Um, you see, you know that meme of like, MFs will turn four and choose one of these things as their personality? Uh, and it's like, you know, space, pirates, dinosaurs, any of those things. Um, yeah, I was one of those kids. Initially, I was like huge into space stuff, clearly. But then when I was around seven years old, I fell in love with dinosaurs and anything that had to do with like prehistoric history. This was also as the show Dinosaur Train was airing, so it was like, perfect timing. But Little Inu was just so adorable and looked like the perfect toy for me. Which leads me to a fake commercial that many kids thought was real, by the name of Real Dinosaur Pets. Watching this, I imagine that this will completely bring back <laughs> memories that you forgot that you had. The commercial explains that by reverse engineering chicken eggs, they have ended up actually making tiny dinosaurs that you can care for. All you gotta do is take dino development goo, shake it for 24 hours, and then leave it in a dark place for three weeks and you'd get a little dinosaur. The commercial's ridiculous. It's very, very obviously a joke. The T-Rex is obviously made of Play-Doh or some sort of clay and it's clearly stop motion. But this did not stop a lot of kids from believing that this was actually real because the commercial is very detailed. I know it's not a real toy commercial, but I had to mention it. This thing is so iconic and it's so classic. And I wanted to put it in the Nostalgia Iceberg video, but I forgot, so didn't show up. I knew this wasn't real as a kid, but I, like, really wanted it to be real, and whenever I watched it, I kind of suspended my disbelief and was just like, wow, real dinosaur pets, because all I wanted was to have my own little pterodactyl or something like that. Looking at the comments nowadays really just shows how many kids believed it and are coming back and watching the video again, and honestly, if you haven't seen it in a long time, I'd highly recommend giving it another watch. It's such a great video. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Nintendo had some pretty wild commercials at the time. Now let's go back to the early 2000s ones, like the Luigi's Mansion Goth Girl commercial. This commercial is one of the weirdest I've ever seen, and it, it surprises me that Nintendo, you know, the same Nintendo from nowadays, would make something like this. 
So, it's really like the most 2001 commercial you ever see. It starts off with this very normal dude and this elegant goth girl sitting on a couch in a red and white room. She looks over, he starts to scoot a little closer, and is like starting to hit on her. He's really starting to make his advances until he sees a weird cube necklace around her neck that then shows a ghost face. He starts screaming and the room turns into Luigi's mansion, and he's freaking out. He's alone on the couch, and then uh, he looks down at where the goth girl was and sees a Nintendo GameCube. Yeah, so weird. A lot of these old Nintendo commercials were very strange, but the ones that I kind of grew up with more were the Wii era commercials. Of course, there's the classic Wii Would Like to Play one, which features two Japanese businessmen coming up to random people's homes, giving them a Wii, and then saying that they would like to play, and then playing the Wii with them. It's kind of weird, but it's, it's classic. Another one, there was really cool commercials like the Mario ones and the Metroid Prime one, and then of course the 3DS commercials, which were personally my favorite. There was this one commercial for Super Mario 3D World, which featured a guy basically going inside of the game because of how immersive the 3D feature was, and it made me want that thing so bad. Many of these commercials were just so cool and so creative, I really, really love them. And the thing is, nowadays, Nintendo commercials, and just Nintendo in general as a brand in terms of how they theme the Switch, is really, really, really bland and lackluster. Like, say what you will about the Wii U and its marketing, but at least it had some character and personality. There was still, like, Miiverse and different things that you could do that weren't just, like, a white or gray background with your games on it. Like, that's all the Switch is. There's really nothing special to do on it. There's no little mini games or Street Pass or anything like that. Older Nintendo consoles just really were so special and had such an amazing theming and fun factor to them. I, I really love them. Now, I want to move on to one more. Um, this is not necessarily a toy commercial. It, it's a candy commercial, but it's one that my dad worked on. So I want to mention it because I've never heard anyone talk about it and it's genuinely so weird and, and very creepy. This is a commercial by the name of Gusher for an Eye. This commercial features a little girl singing a song about a guy named Todd who was born with a gusher for an eye. He could actively spray gusher out of his eye and he would feed people and birds and like cool kids. The imagery is just really, really weird and bizarre. And I'm sure it like freaked a lot of people out. I don't know how popular the commercial actually was since I've only really seen uploads of it on YouTube, but it is so, so bizarre. There's also a Lost Flash game that he worked on that um, I have a very distinct memory of. It was like kind of a zombie sort of game where instead of zombies, it was like mouth people, so their heads were just giant mouths and you have to spray gusher juice into their mouths for them to leave you alone. I have not found any screenshots of, I've never seen any gameplay of it, obviously it's long gone, and it's probably lost forever, but honestly, I would love to play it again, I remember it being very fun. Anyway, let's get back to the toys. Another classic one was the Nerf commercials, specifically for their end strike guns. So back in the early 2000s, Nerf ended up releasing a line by the name of Nerf End Strike, which was their newer, more elite series of nerf guns. The commercials had this kind of like militaristic, almost like matrix combat scene sort of vibe. And they made these guns look so, so cool. And like, you know, much more than just a, a nerf blaster. Now this also tied into a video game as well as some like flash commercials as well. It was just badass. I miss these commercials. Not that new nerf commercials are bad, but these were just so, so cool. And of course, one of my favorites, a toy that I honestly still think is really, really cool, and I've kind of amassed a good collection of them, is of course, Bionicle. Bionicle had the most wild commercials ever, and they were so cool. For those who are even mildly familiar with it, you know that Bionicle has crazy, crazy lore that is like super convoluted and very extensive, and it's just like really cool, and they shine through from the commercials. What's cool is that the commercials would actually kind of expand the lore or like share parts of the story, and some were kind of framed as if they were like nature documentaries about the different creatures that the toys were. It was genuinely awesome. Bionicle ran from 2001 all the way until 2010. It was then brought back in 2015 and then cancelled in 2016, unfortunately. Now the thing is, Bionicle is just genuinely so cool. And I kind of grew up with it. I had a, I had a couple figures growing up. I ended up kind of getting more into it later. I've got a pretty sizable collection myself, which again, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. Lego was on their A-game doing commercials in the 2000s. A line of Lego toys that I really, really want to specifically mention is Lego Power Miners. <laughs> Lego
LEGO Power Miners was a theme of LEGO toys that was basically themed after these miners going to the core of the Earth because there was a bunch of weird earthquakes happening and they need to figure out why. And they're then encountered by a bunch of these rock monsters who eat crystals to power up. So they use all their different mining gear and all these different things to battle these rock monsters and to get the crystals themselves and save the planet. And these toys were so cool and so creative. And it's honestly not a stretch to say that they were one of, if not LEGO's best theme mostly because of these little rock monsters. They were so, so cool. And there was really nothing like them. The commercials were awesome, the toys were awesome, and there was also all these little flash games that went along it as well. It was so, so cool. They were gone too soon, if I'm being completely honest, and I would love to see a revival of this theme, honestly. Something else that was really cool were these Toy Story toy commercials. So, growing up, I was a huge Toy Story fan. So when Toy Story 3 was getting released, the marketing around it was insane, and I was all in for it. The company Thinkway released this line of very high quality and movie accurate Toy Story toys that were all pretty expensive, but they all had really cool features. And the commercials for these were just great. Again, I watched these commercials online, and then I asked for the toys. I ended up getting some, one of which is like insanely expensive now, so I'm sitting on a little potato-shaped gold mine. If you remember these old Toy Story toy commercials, you'd know that they were just awesome, and really made you hyped for both the toys, but also the film. Now, there's one more genre of toys that I want to talk about, and these are space toys. My personal favorite of the bunch. There was this great commercial for a toy by the name of Martian Matter. Now, Martian Matter was kind of like a creepy crawlers type thing where you make your own toy. Only this time, instead of bugs, it was aliens. And oh man, that appeals to me on such a personal level. These were super cool, and I remember seeing the commercial online a bunch, and they were just so creepy and mysterious. Alongside these test tube alien toys as well. Oh man, so, so cool. And especially Star Wars toy commercials. These were absolutely incredible. See, I grew up during the rise of Revenge of the Sith. Like, when that marketing was full on in. After that, the Clone Wars. And if you're a Star Wars fan, you know that this is kind of like the best era of Star Wars. At least toy-wise and also lore-wise, but you know, that's that's definitely subjective. Anyway, the commercials were very, very cool. All the general marketing behind Revenge of the Sith really had that 2000s edge that I was talking about earlier, where it was just like rock music, and it was edgy, and it was hardcore, and it was so cool. Most of it really featured on the lava theme of it all, alongside Darth Vader. I'm gonna lump in the LEGO Star Wars commercials as well, because they were fantastic as well. And nothing made you want a LEGO Star Wars set more than seeing the commercials or the stop motions on YouTube, but you know, that's, that's, that's a video for another day. The last thing on this list that I want to talk about is something that's a little more personal. Might not be the most universal experience, but for these space toys, these were some of my favorite. And these were WALL-E toys. So the film WALL-E uh, is, is my favorite movie ever. It has been since I was a little kid. It honestly gets better the older that you get because the theme of the movie kind of just gets more and more real, and you understand it more. It's a fantastic movie, and they made some really, really cool toys to go along with it. And their commercials were so good, and they just have that energy that just, you can't get anywhere else. I wish I could describe it better, because there's such a certain vibe about these toys and these commercials that are so exclusive to the time period that you really just can't recapture anywhere else. So I actually have a good chunk of these toys here, and I'm gonna display them and see if they still hold up to this day. Okay, so here we are, and now we're actually playing with these toys and giving you kind of a demonstration of them to see if they are any good or really if they live up to the commercials and if they are like they were in them. So, uh, it's really in no particular order. Uh, I'm gonna start off with the gross toys because that's kind of what I talked about first. But um, yeah, let's start off with Mad Balls. Gross for one, gross for all. Mad Balls were iconic, and these ones here that I'm showing you are from my childhood. Uh, so this guy, Dustbrain here, he's a bit 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 beat up but that's okay so he's squishy kind of bouncy and he just fell off the table fantastic toy i love that thing and here we've got one of the six series ones squeeze him and worms pop out i'm surprised that this little like worm sack is still uh like working because most of these balls pop after a few years it's the same character and they've got pretty much the same mold but you know it's like one's made of rubber the other's made of foam. Uh, Mad Balls were peak. I absolutely love these things. I still do. I think they are really just cool to look at and I like throwing stuff at walls. So honestly, I give them a big, big thumbs up. So I'll put them in the thumbs up middle area because I'm just figuring out how I'm doing this as we go along. Another one, pretty cool. You guys saw is the Stretch Screamers. He's got batteries in him. This is one of the original ones. This is the Wolfman. 
and it's a little brutal. He's got like a thing in his face that if you squeeze it, like liquid will come out. Or like a, a ball, with, it looks like the Mad Ball 6 series, but I don't really want to do that because this thing is over 20 years old and it's probably gonna pop and I don't want to pop it. He stretches, he screams. What more could you want? Really? It's brutal, but it is what it is. And then we got one of the newer ones here. I think these were released in 2012. Um, they are much stretchier than the original counterparts. So these ones had a unique gimmick. Uh, rather than... Shut up. Rather than having the um, water sacks on the inside, they instead had little things that could pop out. It's like his brain there shoots out and the mummy's eyeball popped out and Ghostface's mouth popped out, I believe. But these are cool and honestly, I think they're kind of better toys than the original, even though I like the originals more. They're more durable and uh, this guy doesn't have batteries, but it's the same thing. He, he screams and I love how bendy his arms are just, just all the time. It's it's great. He's cool. Of course, we've got Dr. Dreadful. This is the zombie lab. Obviously, I don't have any of the old Dr. Dreadful powder kits, which you'd make the candy out of, because this thing is from 2000. I think I got this Christmas of 2011. So, um, it's been a while. And as you can see, that's not a blood effect. That's just old candy that is dried out and is really, really hard now. I'm not even going to try and remove it because I don't care enough. But this one was cool because it had multiple functions. So you can make gummy spiders and worms through these two um, different like molds up there. You can make the bubbling brains like stew up here, which was a lot of fun. And then uh, there was one more thing where you could push down the head and it would like reveal this, this weird like blue stuff and you'd make a zombie barf drink. Super cool toy. Didn't taste the best in the world, but that didn't really matter because it was just fun to make. So I'm gonna give it another thumbs up. We're seeing a consistent theme here. And then so here we've got the electronic morph man. He's like a stretch screamer, but he doesn't scream when you stretch him. Rather, he would scream when you hit this button here. There was a little area here where you'd stick a syringe in there and then suck out all the air and make him all gross. This one has been played with a lot, so his, uh, his arm is kind of ripped. So... The fact that he didn't really scream when you stretched him was always kind of not great so i'm this is my first kind of thumbs down they're cool and they're rare and expensive now but without the vacuum which we never had i i can't give this one too good of a score unfortunately i'm sorry another one which was one of my favorites was the trash pack so i've got little trash bins here these are all series one the original line of trash pack because they're the best ones best designs coolest they're super cool and some of these here are actually very rare trash pack resell for like a lot now like you can get up to like five bucks for just like a single one of these especially series one one so if you've got a bunch you could make a lot of money by selling them i'm not gonna do that because i think they're really cool we got this little milk carton guy and then this guy's i know his name is obnoxious b um we got another one here these two cans were not from series one this was like they brought back series one later as ghosts and just reproduced all the toys with clear plastic which was kind of genius because then people bought them again here's one of the ghost guys it is the same thing as the original this guy was my first trash pack and also my favorite one uh it's a little apple core dude and as you can tell he's kind of beat up definitely very well loved but these had play sets and stuff like that i'm not gonna bring them out because they're big but I had a few, and those things were so much fun. Uh, I still have most of them, actually. They're really cool. These ones are a huge thumbs up for me, and honestly, there's so much you can do with them, and they also act as uh, pencil toppers, too. Like, here's a pen right here. How cool is that? Imagine going to your, like, corporate job, and you got a little trash guy on your pen. It's perfect. So here is Elastic, Amazing Elastic... What is it called? Honestly, there are so many different names for this exact toy. This one is by Marvin's Magic who is a company. They've got a store in, in like the UK and they sell at FAO Schwartz stores. And that's where I picked mine up. So we're gonna take a look at this right now. I don't know if this is one of the toys you can get online. I know uh, FAO and Marvin's Magic are kind of exclusive with what you can get in store and online. So I'm gonna take out my official Scallywags knife, which is a pirate band that I created. No one knows that, but if you wanna follow us on Instagram, we are the Scallywags NYC and we frequently perform shows in New York City, and we're like the coolest band 
you'll ever see and we're silly and we're terrible. Here's our plastic. Whoop. We got four tubes of plastic. I think this was $20. Blue is my favorite color, so we're gonna start with that. We are gonna take a nice glob of our plastic here, we slap it right on our, <laughs> it's so sticky. And now, the magic happens. Right before your eyes, I'm gonna create a balloon out of plastic and thin air and my, uh, uh my breath. <laughs> Amazing elastic plastic balloon with multiple holes in it. Okay, I think attempt number one is a failure. So the commercials always show them making different like sculptures, like teddy bears and worms and caterpillars and stuff. So what I'm gonna do instead of making one of those things is try and make my buddy Captain Orion. <laughs> there we go. And it's actually like a cool, bouncy balloon ball. And... Uh-oh. Seems to be. Ah, <laughs> there we go. Do you see the resemblance? Looks about to... Kind of the same exact thing to me, honestly. This stuff is really fun. I gotta be honest. I, th this is awesome. Um... I may not be the best at it, but I'll train and then I can make beautiful art. So look, another fantastic toy line was Lego Bionicle. Um, Bionicle still holds up to this day. I think I mentioned that earlier. I don't know. I'm, I'm recording this part like two and a half weeks after I record the first part. So bear with me if I'm like repeating things, but Lego Bionicle was one of the coolest, if not the coolest Lego line out there. So much fun, so many different figures. This here is Tahu, the main character. This isn't exactly the most like, this is not how you'd buy him. He'd come with a different mask. This is like the second iteration of him. It's iconic and it's cool and it's amazing. I've actually got quite the sizable Bionicle collection. Um, and I'm letting that information out just for the ladies in the audience. Just, you know, I'm single and I have a lot of Bionicle. Just putting that out there. But these things are awesome and they are really, really cool. You pick up chicks with them, you play with them, you can build your own different types of Bionicle. Uh, this here is a custom one, actually, of Orion. So, you know, it's kind of similar. We got the armor on the sides, the green hands, the, you know, it's, it's made of mostly the first, like, 2001 wave parts. It's cute though, and the arms aren't the same, but that's okay, I didn't have another one of these green um, claw pieces. So Bionicle, huge thumbs up from me, 1,000 million percent, and they always have and they always will. If LEGO decides to bring them back again, then I'm all for it. And then on that same topic of LEGO, we've got Power Miners, which... These little guys were like the most awesome little minifigures ever, and um, I love them. They are so iconic, and their design is perfect. So these things had really cool features. They had these huge tires that would move, um, and all of them were kind of like mining equipment, so obviously this one would get big rocks out of the way, alongside like getting rid of rock monsters. And you could like pick them up in this little thingy and take them to other locations and drive them away, drop them off. Here's a crystal inside that red guy. It's so cool. And the crystals gave him power too, right? So, um, you know, you could play with them like you're trying to defend the crystals. Always gonna be on the rock monster side. I think they're way cooler and they're just doing their thing. And us humans are the ones messing it all up for them. And uh, I love the power miners vehicles, but the rock monsters are cute and awesome. And they have a rock king and he's like a big bionicle. So yeah, huge thumbs up, bam. So I don't have many Mighty Beans left. I had a couple as a kid, but this is one of the first ones I got. It's a Luke Skywalker Mighty Bean and it is ugly as sin, but it's a Mighty Bean nonetheless. That's what they do. And they were a huge international success. It is genuinely a really cool little plaything. Putting them down from like ramps and vehicles and making races for them and stuff as a kid was super fun. And uh, yeah, honestly, thumbs up. This guy right here is what I'm using to represent Star Wars toys because um, especially if you know me and you've been to my house, you know that I have a lot of Star Wars toys 
collectibles, I'd like to call them. But this is one in box. This is a clone trooper from Regent of the Sith. I don't know what which battalion he is, but like the Lego guy in Lego Star Wars, he wasn't a shock trooper of course on guard. He was this guy who was piloting the, the AT-APs in the game. If you know that design, that's where you probably know it from because they do not show up in the movie. These Revenge of the Sith boxes had this awesome fiery design. It was super edgy. Darth Vader was everywhere. Uh, the vehicles were incredible. Um, the figures themselves were super articulated and really high quality. They were just peak. And Star Wars toys literally have not been better since. After Disney bought Star Wars, the quality of the toys went downhill like super fast. Uh, instead of having like this guy's got like 14 points of articulation that went all the way down to 5 and were the same price if not more expensive. Which is outrageous and unfair. Thumbs up. And last but not least, we've got my boy Wally representing the space toys. Um, now this, this toy I absolutely love. Um, this is the same one I had since I was a little kid and I literally like love this thing. I'll turn him on for you. He's kind of loud in the mics right here, so apologies if he's a little overkill. You press these buttons here, and he talks. And the neck's supposed to move. It doesn't work anymore. The lights, like the eyes were supposed to light up. Um, and then one fatal day, I stepped on I stepped on him. He was in our car, I stepped on him. Accidentally. And that broke the eyes, making the head just kind of sag to the side. Which, uh, then me and my mom did this project to fix Wally. Or what we did is that we took the whole thing apart from the neck. We stripped the wires and re-soldered them onto the broken part to get his eyes working again. Which is insane. Like, I don't know how we did that. My mom and I would repair so many toys in, like, legit ways. And we got Wally working again. And then his head fell off, which is why he's, like, heavily glued. And I, I did that in like, I glued him back on in like 2019 or so. This thing's adorable. His arms move, his hands move, which is so cute. Like, look at that, they think they, they his little hands. His neck moves as well, so you can make him look up or down or to the side and all that stuff. This little trash area opens up and closes, revealing garbage. And the tread on his wheels actually works. S tier toy. It's going in the thumbs up. Um, so basically everything's a thumbs up, except for this poor bastard. But yeah, that was the nostalgic look back at 2000s toys and 2000s toy commercials, and the art of them, and how wonderful and amazing they are. I absolutely love these things, and I'm sure you do too if you're watching this all the way. And, um, it was really fun to make this video. You know, a lot of my videos are about horrible subject matters that make me feel awful while I'm researching and editing them for like tens of hours, so it was really nice to take a break from that sort of stuff and make a nostalgic video, because it's been a little while. But yeah, I'd love to hear your favorite of these toys, or if there's something that I miss that you really remember. Um, obviously in terms of the ones I have to display, I don't have many of them, you know, um, this is really what I had growing up, including this, uh, later, which kind of flattened out a little bit, but now he looks like Invader Zim, kinda, so that's cute. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. You watched all the way to the end, you're a great audience member. If you want to know where to get this little guy, uh, it'll be on either an Etsy or Shopify stop shirt thing, what? It'll be in the link in description, I'm still working on it, figuring it out. But we've got like 99 of these little guys for you to buy. So 35 bucks plus shipping, it's a really good deal. These are top quality plushies. Like they're really nice and really cuddly and the arms are articulated and they move and it's incredible. And then the shirts as well are on, you can see them just in the description below and they also pop up to you if you don't have an ad blocker on. But yeah, super cool designs. A lot of them created by fans as well, which is just awesome. They're incredible. So you have an incredible rest of your day or night, and I encourage you to go look back at your childhood playthings, because honestly, I think it might be a nice experience. I've been Raymundo2112, and you've been a great audience member. So I'll see you in the next one when we cover I Can't Sleep.